Welcome, listener, to Story Premise. This is a storytelling podcast of fantasy, fiction, and folk tales. Today's tale is the backstory of On the Verge of Shadow, one of our other productions. We recommend you listen to On the Verge of Shadow before this story. You can find it by clicking on the title card on screen. Today's story was written by Craig Snow. It is narrated by Story Premise. If you want to submit your own story, email your story to the address in the video description. Behind the Shadow The Kingdom of Fallenvale is ruled by High King Deneric. One could argue that the kingdom was peaceful, the people were prosperous, and the High King was truly noble. Unfortunately, fate had another story to tell. The High King was unable to sire children. As such, the situation created an undeniable void of power that could only be filled by law in one of two ways. One, upon the death of the king, if there was no lawful heir, the High Chancellor would be made king. Two, if the king appointed an heir and transferred the rulership, that individual would become the new king. The revelation that technically anyone could be appointed king inspired the hearts of the people both the noble and the less noble. Many performed great services to the king in hopes of gaining the king's favor. All were fruitless attempts. If acts of great service were all that were in store for the king, this story would not have led to what it did. For you see, there was one especially ambitious individual, Baladarin, the High Chancellor. Baladarin was a quiet, brilliant schemer. He was tall, had oily dark hair, and a continual somber outlook. Through a series of coincidental accidents and undeniable achievements, he became the High Chancellor of the Kingdom. He enacted the King's laws, governed the enforcers. He was the High Judge of the land. It was not high enough for him, however. Baladarin had his sights set on the kingship from the onset of his journey. Within time, he was confident he would gain his desire. Yet, as events often do to the best made plans, the winds turned, word spread, the king had chosen an heir. Dan Gordon, the high general, an exceptional friend to the king. Baladarin, in public, wore a mask of gratitude. In private, however, he seethed. Dan Gordon was powerful, not only in influence, but also as an adversary. Baladarin would have to tackle this new threat immediately. On the night of the coronation, the masses gathered around the royal chapel. Vendors were everywhere, selling wares, food, and jewelry. Posters hung. Royal coronation for future High King Dan Gordon. The colors of the kingdom were proudly on display throughout the town. It would be a night to remember. None thought it would be the last night they'd remember. Trumpets blew. High King Deneric spoke and the crowds cheered. Tears were shed. Long live the good king. It's time to turn over a new leaf. It's time to pass the kingship to younger hands. I present to you, Dan Gordon, the mighty. Cheers grew. Dan Gordon gave a rousing speech of loyalty and aspirations for the kingdom. As the speech ended, the cheers grew to be deafening. After what seemed to last forever, the presentation of the crown began. Dan Gordon knelt before the High King. A ceremonial sword tapped each shoulder. Then the king turned. The High Chancellor brought the crown upon a royal purple pillow. The king lifted the crown. As he set it upon Dan Gurdon, the crowd cheered. He smiled as a great weariness set upon him. Perhaps he would finally get some rest. The king swayed and collapsed. Screams erupted. Immediately, Dan Gurdon collapsed as well frothing at the mouth. Medical personnel responded immediately. A shocked-looking High Chancellor took charge and calmed the crowd. Kale, the captain of the guard, quickly took lead of the investigation. He quickly identified the crown was coated in a clear substance. Somehow, both the king and the appointed were poisoned. Kale's thoughts were interrupted by a guard. Sir, it appears the general is dead. The king seems to be in bad shape. Dread filled Kale's thoughts. That dread spread to everyone as he pronounced the fateful news. Well, almost everyone. There was one High Chancellor who knew 
by law there would soon be a new king. The High King awoke in his room in a cold sweat. Baladarin! <clears throat> Get me Baladarin immediately! A guard sprinted and returned with a somber High Chancellor. My liege, thank goodness you are awake, spoke Baladarin. You! gasped the High King. Excuse me? I know what you've done, but I know there's no way I could prove it. I'm sorry, I'm not following, reacted Baladarin. Then more forcefully, perhaps you should get more rest. I will have an heir, but you will never be it. You are hereby renounced of your rank. Kale! Kale slipped out of the shadows. Take him to the dungeons. As you command. A stunned Baladarin was dragged out of the room. As the doors shut, the king caught sight of two vengeful eyes. The malice he saw reflected made sleep impossible for the next hours. Foiled. Imprisoned, Baladarin slammed the wall. All those years plotting, scheming, even with the most traceless approaches. Yet here he was. In the morning he would be announced as the perpetrator for the deaths of both the general and soon the king. Of course, any mastermind always has a backup plan up their sleeves. In the dead of night, Baladarin spoke a word and the lock melted from its place. At another word, the guards on duty fell slack to the ground. Baladarin made his way to the forge. As he entered the room, the glowing fire, smell of oil, and hum of machinery filled the air. To the side of the room was the gas furnace, which supplied gas to all the lamplights throughout the fortress. With a twist of a wheel, the lights in the fortress went out. To be safe, he spoke another word, and the wheel melted into slag. Quickly, Baladarin stole to the fifth floor to his personal office. He locked the door and scattered his items to a corner. He staged a podium facing the center of the circular room. He finished arrangements by placing an ancient book upon the podium. Chapter 68 Mist Everlasting The Spell of Immortality and Insatiable Power He began chanting cryptic words of darkness and shadow. The temperature dropped. Dark vapor formed and collected into a sinister orb in the center of the room. Baladarin continued, though his dark chanting dwindled to a whisper as inexplicable dread ate at his chest. He didn't dare cease, however. Once the spell started, it could not be stopped. The orb continued to coalesce, thickening into a void. It was nearly complete. Kale and the two guards blasted into the room. Each stopped, horror filling their minds at what they would never be able to unsee. Baladarin looked up. He raised a hand and spoke a single word. A wave of energy hurled the three men into the wall. Baladarin continued chanting the spell, racing for the finish. A tendril of black mist snaked out from the void, wrapping around Baladarin's outstretched arms. It was almost complete. Kale was gripped in horror and revulsion. His arms felt like lead, and his heart felt ready to burst. His stomach churned as if he were falling from a precipice with no bottom. He was completely paralyzed with terror. He would have given way completely to madness, if it weren't for one thought. The thought of his people. That thought grew to a warm spot in his chest. He thought of all the days and nights he trained, the drills that made him ache so hard he wanted to give up. He remembered losing his father to criminals, and his own vow to never let his people suffer the same fate. He remembered how he pushed himself to become much more than he ever thought he could, all in hopes that one day, when duty called, he would be able to answer. All of that was preparing him for this moment. The warm spot in his chest combusted, energy rolled down his arms. He grabbed his dagger and threw it at Baladarn. It pierced him in the leg. Baladarin screamed in pain, pausing in the spell. The two guards received their strength and charged forward. As they lashed out in unison with their weapons, Baladarin threw up his hands. Mist poured out, washing over the guards. The guards screamed and dropped to their feet. In a flash, both were gone. Their empty swords clanged to the ground. As Kale closed in, 
Baladarin threw up a hand and blasted Kale off his feet again. He knocked against the podium, causing the book to crash over. Baladarin pulled the knife from his leg. To Kale's revulsion, the wound filled with mist and sealed. Knowing he was outmatched, Kale grabbed the book from the floor and ripped out the page of the spell, the last page that contained the unfinished incantation. No! Echoed down the stairs as Kale sprinted to the landing. Attack in the fortress! Attack! The garrison exploded in activity. The king was escorted from his room. Where is the attack coming from? Rasped the king, who looked greenish and sickly. The chancellor's office. He somehow... He didn't finish his statement, as a figure now transformed into pure mist stepped out onto the landing. I'll make this really simple, Kale. Give me the page, and I'll let you die quickly. Never! Fine, have it your way. Crossbows released their shafts at the figure, passing harmlessly through him. The mist converged onto the soldiers, devouring them into nothing one by one. As the mist consumed each person, it grew in size. Panic spread, and soon men were running in fear. The captain rushed the king through the dark to the front entrance. On the way, Kale grabbed an old torch and lit it with a strike against the wall. The light flared to life, dispelling the penetrating chill that entered into the fortress. As they were rushing, one thought permeated Kale's mind. They had to warn the people. The entrance was close in sight. Their steps echoed in now eerie silence. The king tripped on his feet, gasping and coughing phlegm. My king, we have to hurry. You are too late, spoke the mist. Within a few hours, the dark poison will complete its work. Your king will be no more. And by my reckoning, that will make me king by law. You honestly think anyone will follow you now? Rasped the king. You are a monster. The mist recoiled, then it struck. Like a flash, it coiled towards the king and captain. As soon as it hit the edge of the firelight, the mist ricocheted backward, howling in pain. Wait, you can't stand the light? Kale held up the torch higher and hoisted the king. Kale, take this. You must warn the kingdom. I will only slow you down. The king clasped Kale's hand and passed him the key to the keep. The two passed an uncomfortable, knowing look. The mist stopped howling. The air was silent while the two slowly tread backwards toward the door. Suddenly, a gust of wind ripped towards the two, extinguishing the torch. The wind was followed by the mist hurtling towards them. Go! shouted the king. He gripped his sword in his weak hands and gave the war cry of his ancestors and charged. The mist converged on him, slowing as it enveloped him. No! shouted Kale, but he knew it was too late. He sprinted toward the gate and slammed it open. He quickly shut it with the only one key that could open it. The moon was clouded over and the air was chilled. Looking to the west, Kale knew where he needed to go. It was the one place where he could warn all the people and get help. The Gear House. He sprinted as hard as he could, through trees, past the Royal Chapel to the Gear House. Crashing through doors, he sprinted past creaking gears and hissing steam vents. He climbed a series of stairs to the signal rack. On the rack was a series of steam signal rockets. He quickly lit each of them. They whistled into the air, bursting in blood red. The signal was cast. Help would come. Kale turned around as he heard a slam. He staggered to the floor, blood dripping from his gut. Baladarin stood, clothed in mist, holding a mist-shaped crossbow. I told you that I would give you a painful death. Another bolt sliced into Kale's body. All that effort, all for nothing. And in the end, I'll still get that page I want. Kale's eyes grew dim. You won't win. He looked at the crumpled spell in his hands and threw it into the coal furnace. No! The crumpled ball sat in the middle of the fire, strangely unharmed. As Baladarin reached to grab it, he was repelled by the light. You will never get what you want, gasped Kale. The people have been warned. You have failed. Baladarin howled. 
then I will destroy everyone in this kingdom. Within seconds, all the gas lanterns went out in the kingdom. Within moments, there were screams. Within hours, there was silence. Thanks for listening. What did you think of this story? Let us know down below in the comments. If you like this story, please consider subscribing. Click on one of the videos on screen for more stories. Until next time.